Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to go back in time. So Sherman, set the Wayback Machine. We're headed to the year 2004. It's summertime in Ohio. I'm playing in a poker tournament at a Catholic school in Springfield, Ohio. Me and a couple thousand others who caught the No Limit Texas Hold'em bug are playing some really bad, really sloppy poker. Most tables had an all-in on almost every hand because most players spent the drive to Springfield imagining they were the next Gus Hansen or Chris Moneymaker. My memories of the tournament was that I took out three players with quad kings and that I took sixth place overall in the tournament, which I was pretty happy with, but I had a kind of a self-inflated sense of uh, a poker worth at the time. By the time I played that tournament, I had already watched hundreds of hours of poker on TV. I was hooked, and just a few months later, I moved to Vegas to live the dream. Well, not exactly. I spent a few weeks in some short-term rental dive on Boulder Highway until I got around to get in an apartment. I went to Binion's almost every night and got an expensive education from the locals who were at their peak feeding off of fish like me. That would change over time, and I got to the point where I could hold my own and grind out many winning years playing cash games. I won several daily tournaments and made a few runs at the WSOP, the WPT, and assorted other poker series that came to town. But mainly I played cash. I was too impatient for long tournaments. For poker players, it was a great time to be in Vegas. There was poker on TV, poker discussions on the internet forums like 2 Plus 2, and a never-ending selection of cash games, daily tournaments, and sit-and-goes 24-7 on the strip and downtown. Hell, we even had the Poker Dome. What drew me in and drew in tens of thousands of people globally was Texas Hold'em. It was simple and ideal for watching on television and for playing online for those who did not have a card room nearby. Before the 2000s, my poker experience had been in home games and games while in the military that were mostly variants of Stud and Omaha. Texas Hold'em was new to most of us and it grew in popularity as the 2000s started. Arguably, the start of the poker boom came when Chris Moneymaker, an accountant from Kentucky, won the most popular tournament in the world, the WSOP main event of 2003. And this everyman won the tournament by beating someone who could have come straight from Hollywood Central Casting, Sam Farha. Sam was a gambler's gambler who could intimidate even seasoned players. Let's fast forward back to today. As I think about the nearly weekly introduction of the next poker celebrity to be introduced into the mainstream, I wonder whatever happened to these people. Some are icons that remain public figures today, but many were just a flash in the pan or someone that would pop up every few months on television. So for this video, I'm going to take a look at what happened to poker celebrities from the 2000s. While you're watching this, think about liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Comment to let me know if there's anyone that you'd like to know, you know, what happened to them. I really appreciate the support. The first person on our list, appropriately, is Chris Moneymaker. The aforementioned 2003 World Series main event champion became the poster boy for everyone with a Walter Mitty-esque fantasy of slaying Goliath at the poker table. Chris qualified for his $10,000 main event seat through an $86 buy-in qualifier on PokerStars. Luck and a few well-timed bluffs earned him the win. Today, Chris still plays and is an ambassador for an online poker site. He was inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame in 2019 and lives with his wife in Tennessee. In 2005, author and poker enthusiast Michael Craig released a book called The Professor, the Banker, and the Suicide King. The book was a true story of billionaire Andy Beal's poker games with the best cash players on the planet. Beal is the banker in the book's title. The professor is the already mentioned Howard Lederer. The Suicide King? Ted Forrest. Also referred to as Professor Backwards, Forrest is a six-time WSOP bracelet winner, and also he won a WPT event at the Bay 101 Casino. Forrest is probably best known in poker circles for his unique style of play and his willingness to make unusual prop bets. Ted got into trouble in 2016 after passing bad checks at the win, totaling nearly a quarter million dollars. Today, Ted still lives and plays in Las Vegas. Sadly, not everyone on our list of poker celebrities from the early 2000s is still with us. Probably the saddest is the passing of Lane Flack. Lane was nicknamed Back-to-Back -back Flack after winning consecutive tournaments in the 1999 Legends of Poker series. Flack was a six-time series bracelet winner and a fan favorite. He died on July 19, 2021 at the age of 52. The cause of death was a combination of drugs including fentanyl, cocaine, and meth. 2015 inductee into the Poker Hall of Fame, Jennifer Harmon has overcome many obstacles in life to cement her place as one of the best all-around poker players of the past 20 years. Her success not only has come from tournament play, but also in the biggest cash games in Vegas. Harmon was one of the key players that took on Andy Beal, who was mentioned earlier. 
A two-time World Series bracelet winner, Harmon had two kidney transplants and stepped away from the game in 2004 to recover. Upon her return, she picked up where she left off, cashing in several large tournaments. Most notably, Jennifer Harmon is the only woman to be a regular at the high-stakes games in Bellagio. She is still a regular at Bellagio and is involved in several charities. The Flying Dutchman, Marcel Lusk, was a regular fixture during ESPN's coverage of the World Series in the early 2000s. His stylish wardrobe and outgoing demeanor was liked by the viewing audience, but got mixed reactions from those he played against. He made deep runs during the main event in 2003, where he finished 14th, and in 2004, where he finished in 10th. His next deep run at the main event wouldn't be until 2017, where he finished in 23rd place. Today, Lusk is better known in Europe, where he's been featured in several poker events and TV shows over the years. But Americans will always remember his positive attitude, dapper clothes, and upside-down sunglasses. Kid Poker has been one of the most high-profile fixtures on the poker scene for over 25 years. Daniel's likable personality and ability to communicate well with all levels of players and fans made him a regular go-to pro by the television networks covering main events. Inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame in 2014, Daniel is a six-time WSOP bracelet winner. He has also won two World Poker Tour events and a number of other major tournaments. In 2004 and 2013, he was named Player of the Year in the World Series. He is the only player to have received that honor twice. For most of the past 20 years, he has been at or near the top of the lifetime earnings list, having won well over $40 million. Daniel still plays. He lives in Vegas with his wife, Amanda Leatherman. Amanda herself was part of the poker boom as a commentator on several poker shows. Daniel has a channel on YouTube, and during the World Series, it is considered must-see TV for fans of the series. Ireland's Andy Black was another interesting character from Europe that ESPN made the most of featuring during its coverage of the World Series of Poker. Prior to the poker boom, Black was best known for having been knocked out of the 1997 World Series main event by poker legend and eventual winner Stu Unger. Shortly after that, Andy gave up his worldly possessions and fully embraced Buddhism, turning his back on the poker world. Black came back to the poker world in 2004, and in 2005 he placed fifth in the main event. His overall tournament winnings are nearly $5 million. Today, he lives in Dublin and occasionally pops up on the poker radar, mostly playing in small events. Canadian Gavin Smith was, like Chris Moneymaker, one of those everyman stories that made him a very popular figure in the poker community. At the table, he displayed a mix of humor and aggression. Smith was a hard worker who spent time driving a cab in his native Ontario and played poker during his free time. Eventually, he came to the U.S. to start playing tournaments and won the World Poker Tour's Mirage Poker Showdown in 2005. The $1.1 million payday and reputation gained from having defeated Ted Forrest heads up helped propel Smith into the spotlight. Smith won one World Series bracelet in 2010 and had a total of 47 caches at the World Series. On January 14, 2019, the poker world was stunned by the news that Smith died in his sleep in Houston, Texas. He was 50 years old. Dutch was one of the most interesting and controversial players during the early years of the poker boom. He was a regular fixture on ESPN's World Series broadcasts. Boyd and the members of his group called The Crew were seen as representative of the young generation of players. Boyd was the ideal spokesperson for this group with a made-for-TV persona. Dutch's controversies overshadow a solid poker playing career. He's a three-time World Series bracelet winner and has 40 caches and over two and a half million dollars in tournament winnings. For Boyd, controversy began before we first saw him on ESPN. In 2000 and 2001, he operated an unlicensed poker site based out of Antigua. When the site was shut down, over $400,000 in funds due to players were never returned. This problem has followed Boyd to this day. In 2009, Boyd was sued by 2 Plus 2 Publishing for taking a variation of their name and using it to try and divert users away from the 2 Plus 2 poker forums and send them to his own site. Boyd lost the suit and was ordered to pay 2 Plus 2 uh, almost $60,000 in damages and attorney fees. Dutch has a Twitch channel, but it doesn't appear to have been active for about five years. So where is he now? In 2021, Boyd gave an interview where he said that he had passed the Nevada State Bar exam and now he's a practicing attorney. Also in 2021, Boyd was reported to have taken a job as a dealer at the Wynn, a poker dealer. So if you do happen to go to the Wynn and you see Boyd dealing there, say hi. So who would you like to get an update on? Leave a note in the comments, let me know. I'd be happy to do a part two video. But in the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash the notify button so you'll know when the next video comes out. In the meantime, I thank you for your support. I appreciate you watching this video and I wish you a happy day. I'll see you next time.